Hello and welcome back to the BHS channel, Biochemistry for Health Sciences. In the previous videos, we talked about carbohydrates as identification molecules. So we talked about the phenomenon of molecular recognition, how carbohydrates are very important for molecular recognition. Well, in today's video, let's look more closely at this phenomenon that we call molecular recognition. So molecular recognition is basically molecules recognizing other molecules, which then leads to binding and after that binding, some biological process happens. Something happens. So this is, of course, very, very important because we see so many examples of this happening in our body all the time. For example, during infections, the microbes recognize and bind some molecules in your body. So we talked about this. These molecules could be oligosaccharides present on the surface of, of your cells. We see this in antibody antigen interactions. When antibodies bind to their antigens, we see this process of molecular recognition. Same thing happens when cells bind other cells. There is a lot of cell-cell interaction that is basically molecules recognizing other molecules. In cell signaling, for example, signals such as hormones, such as insulin, insulin would recognize the insulin receptor. It will recognize and bind the insulin receptor. And once insulin binds its receptor, that triggers cell signaling and some biological process happens. And we see so many examples of this including how enzymes work. Enzymes work by binding their substrates and then that binding leads to catalysis. Okay, so many, many examples in our body that are based on molecular recognition. So to understand molecular recognition, let's look at what we call as weak forces. So here is a uh, cartoon of water molecules. Now water, as you know, has oxygen bound to hydrogens. This single bond here, this is called a covalent bond. This is a strong force. Covalent bonds are strong forces. So this is a covalent. So the water molecule, the oxygen and the two hydrogens are attached to one another through strong force called covalent bonds. But between the water molecules, there is interaction. This is a weak force. In this case, this weak force is called a hydrogen bond. Okay, hydrogen bond is an example of a weak force. So we see strong forces and weak forces in this example. The same thing we see in our body. So there are many weak forces, but there are three that I think uh, play a very important role for us in healthcare professions. Um, let's look at these three. One is the hydrogen bond that we just talked about. So this is your hydrogen bond. This is a special kind of bond because hydrogen is a very small atom and when it's connected to a nitrogen, which is electronegative, 
this hydrogen becomes slightly electropositive and the nearby is another electronegative atom such as oxygen or nitrogen remember carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen make up more than 99 percent of life so that's why i've used these examples of oxygen and nitrogen which are very commonly found so because this is slight negative this is slight positive there's a little attraction here that's called the hydrogen bond this is a weak force okay we can represent that as this green <clears throat> green segment then we have ionic or electrostatic in this case some chemical group has a positive charge another chemical group has a negative charge when this molecule comes close to this molecule there is a, an attraction where we call ionic bond some people call it salt bridge or electrostatic okay we represent that by the red segment and the third important weak force so these are all weak forces the third important weak force is because we are surrounded by water there's water everywhere and in the presence of water we see this very very important weak force where a something that doesn't like water will associate with something else that doesn't like water okay this is called the hydrophobic one so it's a force between two hydrophobic or non-polar groups so here's an alkyl group for example and here's an aromatic group and in organic chemistry you know aromatic groups don't like water neither do alkyl groups so if this is present on one molecule this is present on another molecule you will see they come together because both of them don't like water and that gives you the hydrophobic force which will represent by the brown segment because these are weak forces um, it goes that the more the weak forces you have between two molecules the stronger the interactions so here's an example here's a molecule in your body floating around in your water either in your blood or in your cells if this molecule for example has one positive charge and one negative charge on this molecule the chances of both of them meeting is quite weak because these molecules are moving around it's a very statistical process the chances of this even if these two came together because this force is so weak they might not even interact or the interact interactions would be very very weak However, if this molecule had three negative charges and did that, this has three positive charges, statistically, when they do come together, the chances of them interacting would be stronger. That will lead to a stronger interaction. And so logically, the more, let's say, positive charges you have on this molecule and more negative charges in this molecule, the chances of their interaction being very strong increases okay so the more the weak forces on molecules the better or the stronger the interaction these are weak forces so we always hear about the lock and key the lock and key idea of molecular recognition and binding this just means that um, you see if you have two shapes that are a non-complementary not lock maybe two locks or two keys then the chances of them forming weak interactions coming together surface to surface is less there's less weak interactions but if we have complementary shapes lock and key then there's more weak interactions that can happen okay more weak interactions compared to this here and the more weak interactions as we mentioned earlier means the stronger the binding the in interactions between molecule a and b and the better the binding the better the chance that some biological process would happen okay so that's why complementary shapes play a very important role in interactions between uh, cells and cells and molecules and cells in the human body 
So you can see basically these weak forces are like our barcodes. Yeah, information molecules for molecular recognition. So if we have this segment here with uh, three electrostatic spaced out in this as shown here, then if another molecule has this, and then there would be a strong interaction. If this is plus and this is negative, okay, they will get attracted very well. Okay, or in other, uh, the other scenario, if this was also plus and this was also plus, they will repel each other very well. Okay, so the, whether they're attracted or they're repelled from one another will depend on this barcode. Similarly, if one molecule had three hydrophobic patches, the other molecule had three hydrophobic patches, the chances of coming together and forming strong interactions in water is very high. Okay, and the same thing goes with hydrogen bonding. So these are barcodes. If the barcodes match, there is complementary. If they match, then the interaction between A and B would be strong. And if they don't match, if they don't match very well, you can see only this one matches, then the interactions would be weaker. Okay, so in a way we are, we have so many barcodes that, that are made basically from these patches of chemicals which can form hydrogen bonds or hydrophobic or electrostatic. And, um, and if they match, you can see the matching here in, within electrostatic, this is a positive here, there's a negative here or two positives or two negatives, and this is a hydrophobic, another hydrophobic on molecule A and B, and there's this chemicals that can hydrogen bond here and hydrogen bond here. So you see these match and they're complementary and there are a lot of interactions. So this binding between A and B would be quite strong. So that's the trick that nature uses. The Basically, these are the forces. These are the forces that cause molecules and cells to bind. Now, these interactions between cells and cells or molecules and cells can happen between all kinds of classes of molecules. So carbohydrate on one molecule can bind or one cell can bind carbohydrate on a, another molecule or cell. We call it glycan-glycan interaction or carbohydrates could interact with proteins on another molecule, or proteins on one molecule or cell could interact with proteins on another molecule or cell, and so on. Okay, so protein, 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 lipids. So basically interactions can be between any class of molecules because all of these molecules have features or chemical structures that can form hydrogen bonds or electrostatic or hydrophobic. So the nice thing about weak forces is not only does it allow cells and molecules to come together, but it also allows them to dissociate because in biology, in our human body, we don't want things to, to come together so strongly that they, that they cannot dissociate. We don't want that. So for example, a virus, when it binds to, its, to, it, to the cell, it, it enters the it enters the cell and then it wants to dissociate from this receptor to get into the cell and start causing the infection. Okay, same thing with antigens, antibodies. We don't want this binding to be too strong. So that's a nice thing about weak forces. It allows association or binding, but it also allows dissociation. And that's very, very critical for everything that happens in the human body. Association binds and then dissociate. Before we leave this um, discussion on the uh, molecular recognition and the weak forces, one more important thing to remember. Um, so all of these events, you know, interaction of microbes with cell surfaces, antibody antigen interactions, cell cell interactions, signals interacting with their receptors, 
uh, enzyme substrate interaction it's very statistical it's very statistical okay everything is moving around in your in your cells in your bloodstream and the chances of a microbe coming close to the receptor or signal to its receptor or the enzyme meeting its substrate or antigen meeting the antibody or one cell meeting another cell all this is very statistical so it's not surprising that the higher the concentration of let's say the signal or the receptor the better the chance that the two will bind okay higher concentration of substrate or enzyme the better there will be the chance that the enzyme will meet the substrate and so on higher the concentration of antigen and antibody the better the chance there will be an interaction Okay, so concentration that we talked about in an earlier video is a very important phenomenon, very important factor that decides whether there's going to be an interaction and eventually would there would be a biological process that happens, whatever that process may be. Okay, thank you for watching. Uh, hopefully we shall see you in the next video.